in the 60s and 70s, the most popular so-called fat burner supplements were categorized as lipotrophics. And lipotrophics consisted mainly of two different nutrients. One was choline, the other was called inositol. Now, choline and inositol were very popular among bodybuilders, often used uh, pre in pre-contest pre pre dieting regimes because they thought it helped to uh, actually burn fat. They were often called fat burners. In fact, even today, they still are sometimes listed as fat burners in supplements. But the truth is, choline and inositol were never really fat burners. What they actually did was the liver tends to accumulate fat under certain conditions. And when it accumulates too much fat, it's, it's called, uh, uh, what's it called, non-alcoholic uh, uh, fatty liver, something like that. Uh, but basically, uh, as the fat accumulates in the liver, it can damage the liver. And the liver has to try and get rid of this fat. And uh, one of the ways it does this is by uh, using certain nutrients to help get rid of the fat. Uh, uh, by, and choline does this by supplying what they call methyl groups, which allow the liver to break down the excess fat. And inositol is also involved in the, uh, in the breakdown of fat in the liver. And somehow this increased uh, tendency to break down excess fat in the liver somehow got transmogulated into choline and inositol being, a, being lipotrophics. Well, they are lipotrophics. In other words, they, 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 they favor fat use, but they're not really fat burners. But in this video, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, inositol because somebody had left a comment under one of my videos asking about some information about inositol. Uh, and inositol is a very interesting compound. Even if it's not a great fat burner, it does a number of other extremely interesting things in the body. So uh, let's let's get into that. Uh, what is inositol? Inositol basically is classified biochemically as a polyol, which means it's a carbohydrate alcohol compound. Uh, and there's uh, there's actually nine different isoforms of uh, inositol, but the main one. And when we talk about inositol, you're usually talking about something called myo-inositol. 95% of the inositol in the body is actually, uh, is actually uh, found as myo-inositol, and the supplement form is also myo-inositol. Uh, inositol has a structure very similar to glucose, which is the only type of carbohydrate that circulates in the blood. As a matter of fact, inositol itself is kind of sweet. It has 50% of the sweetness of sucrose, which is table sugar. Uh, uh, and as again, there's some, it has some interesting properties. Among other effects, inositol can act as a signaling factor involved in the transmission, works with hormones to control various processes in the body. Sometimes it's called a second messenger. I don't want to get into that. It gets a little bit too complex. I want to talk about some of the health conditions that can be affected by inositol supplements. Uh, now, inositol seems to affect a brain neurotransmitter called serotonin. Serotonin is, uh, is produced from the amino acid tryptophan. It's associated with relaxation and sleep. So, uh, inositol, because it seems to uh, affect the uh, uh, synthesis of, of serotonin, it can actually uh, reduce anxiety. It can calm you down. Uh, inositol has sometimes been suggested as a sleep producing aid. I've used it myself and what I found is unless you take at least 12 grams of inositol it had no effect whatsoever on sleep and I found that the, the larger the dose of inositol the greater the, the effect it had on helping me fall asleep. So I've used up to 18 grams of inositol but I will add inositol is not part of my current sleep supplement program which I've des described in past videos my sleep supplement program involves various all-natural substances, herbs such as uh, lemon balm, valerian. These are all associated with helping you increase the onset and increase deep sleep stages, which are very important for health. But inositol it does it is involved in the production of serotonin in the brain, which can have as a, as a, and as a fat, and because of that. A lack of serotonin is involved in very various anxiety disorders, such as panic disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, and post-traumatic stress disorder. 
So theoretically, inositol can help treat some of those things. Uh, also, some studies have shown that inositol is pretty effective in reducing what they call panic attacks. I've had them occasionally myself. They're very unpleasant. You, They come on out of nowhere. You get this feeling of dread that you're suddenly dying. You know, your heart speeds up. Uh, panic, attacks, panic attacks tend to feed on itself, meaning the more you... Uh, the more you worry, the more you panic, the worse it gets. Your heart speeds up. You get a stress reaction. Well, one cure for that I found, by the way, just as a as a uh, tangential statement, is that I, I believe a lot of panic attacks are caused by shallow breathing. In other words, you're not breathing in enough. If you breathe in deeply, you you'll help get rid of the carbon dioxide that you're that's produced in the body. Carbon dioxide has a relationship with panic disorder. But inositol, because it interacts with serotonin, can also help reduce the number of, uh, of uh, panic attacks. Uh, there was a study in 20 people who had panic disorders. They found that giving them 18 grams of inositol each day reduced the number of weekly panic attacks by four. That's, uh, that's, more, th that's more than the average reduction of 2.4 per week seen when they're giving an anxiety drugs, anti-anxiety drugs. So uh, for panic attacks, Inositol actually seemed to work better. Another study of people with uh, OCD, which is, uh, oh, what is that, OCD? I forgot. Uh, compulsive disorder. Uh, it's a basically compulsive disorder. It, it, they found that by giving 18 grams of inositol, it improved the symptoms better than a placebo. Uh, the effects of, uh, of post-traumatic stress disorder haven't really been shown some great effects with inositol. But generally speaking, for any type of mental problem, anxiety, sleep onset, you have to take larger doses of inositol, 18 grams, about 18 grams on the average. Uh, inositol may help control blood sugar by increasing insulin sensitivity. Uh, insulin resistance is a, is a problem with your body's ability to respond to insulin. Uh, it doesn't. What happens is your body develops a resistance to insulin at the, at the level of the cell. Uh, insulin resistance is related to uh, lar large fat cells, which tend to interfere with the insulin receptor, causing an insulin resistance. Very often, uh, if you lose body fat, the insulin resistance will disappear. It's also associated with the excess consumption of carbohydrates, especially fru fructose or fructose. Uh, and uh, uh, inositol uh, can actually work with certain molecules inside the cell that interact with insulin and help insulin become more effective so it helps to lower the degree of insulin resistance or possibly even help to prevent it. So you could say that inositol increases the sensitivity to insulin in a different way than the trace mineral chromium which also does the same thing but in a different manner. Uh, a six-month study of 80 older women with metabolic syndrome Metabolic syndrome is a uh, complex of, sy of uh, symptoms such as having a, a wider waist, elevated blood sugar, elevated blood lipids, uh, and elevated triglycerides. Uh, they all pretend they all are considered a uh, symptomatic of possible cardiovascular disease and diabetes. But anyway, the six-month study of 80 older women with the metabolic syndrome found that four grams per day of inositol improved insulin sensitivity, blood pressure, and levels more more than a placebo. Uh, research in women with gestational diabetes. This is a condition where pregnant women, uh, usually because of poor diet choices, they tend to have a temporary diabetes state. Uh, the biggest problem with uh, gestational, de gestational diabetes is not only that it affects the health of a pregnant woman, but women with gestational diabetes tend to produce babies with more body fat. The babies are born with more body fat. And you can only increase body fat usually at three times a life. You know, when, you're, when you're in the fetal, uh, as a fetus, within the thir three, first three months of life, and during the teenage years, although you can produce extra fat cells through a process called hyperplasia, if you get two fat cells, the existing fat cells will actually, will actually split up and form new fat cells, but you have to reach a certain level of obesity for that to happen. But uh, inositol seems to help increase insulin sensitivity and, and, and help control blood glucose in uh, women who are suffering from gestational diabetes. Uh, inositol also affects women with a certain disease called polycystic ovarian syndrome. Polycystic ovarian syndrome involves the formation of these cysts 
on the ovaries in, in women, uh, and it causes all kinds of health problems, hormonal imbalances. For example, women with poly ovarian, uh, poly ovarian syndrome very often produce too many androgens, uh, for, such as androstendiome, which elevates their testosterone level too much, and they, st they can actually start to get masculinized, even though they're not taking any steroids or any testosterone, just from uh, having polycystic ovarian syndrome, the increased production of androgens. Uh, some studies uh, show that uh, inositol may help improve the condition. Other studies show no effect, so it, it all depends. But uh, it, it can actually, one of the problems with polycystic ovarian syndrome is that it tends to cause infertility in women. And uh, uh, it, 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 tur it turns out that uh, the insulin insensitivity it has a relationship to the reduced fertility in women with polycystic ovarian syndrome. And since acetyl, since inositol can improve insulin sensitivity, it's been studied as a potential treatment. Uh, and again, it, 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 some of the studies show that uh, ingesting two to four grams a day uh, but might help improve this particular aspect of poly ovarian uh, cystic syndrome. Asinacetol also might be useful for treating depression. Again, because uh, anacetol affects neurotransmitters in the brain. Many of your antidepressant drugs work by increasing levels of serotonin in the brain because when serotonin and dopamine, which is another brain neurotransmitter, when they're elevated or normal in the brain, you just don't get depressed. You get depressed when these neurotransmitters drop. And by helping to elevate serotonin, uh, inositol may help prevent or relieve depression. Some research has shown that ingesting 12 grams of inositol for a month can reduce symptoms of depression relative to a placebo. Another small study reported that ingesting 6 grams a day of inositol improved depression in 9 out of 11 uh, study subjects. Uh, it has a, uh, Inositol has a pretty good safety record. It has very few side effects. Uh, you, when you ingest in food, it's in found in various food, fruits, found in various foods, you usually inject, uh, inject anywhere from a gram to seven grams a day, depending on the composition of your diet. The more, the greater the variety of foods you eat, the, great, the more inositol you wind up taking in. Uh, the doses uh, in research studies uh, have ranged from two to 18 grams a day. At the higher doses, there's some side effects uh, these can be, oh God, there's Bruno. Bruno, be quiet. These can be stomach pains, uh, flatulence, that type of thing. Uh, other benefits of weight loss. If it, it, in women who have the polycystic ovarian syndrome, it has stimulated a, a little bit of weight loss. Again, it's not a fat burner. Uh, uh, Anacetol helps regulate blood lipids like cholesterol, triglycerides. Uh, it helps to reduce blood pressure. Again, most of the studies have, have been with women with uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Uh, uh, and, and again, in the food, the foods are beans, fruits, nuts, and grains. Uh, let's see the. Uh, what else can I tell you about it? Uh, well, that's about it, really. I mean, uh, it's it's not a common supplement, but um, it could be useful. Like I say, certain. Men personally think the greatest use of inositol for most people would be as a relaxing substance. It helps to decrease anxiety, helps you to relax, and also it could be a sleep aid when used in, in doses from 12 to 18 grams. So th that's about it for inositol. Uh, if you want more information on nutrition, science, uh, uh, supplement science, uh, anti-aging research, fat loss techniques you can use today, uh, I mean, fat loss, effective fat loss. He's driving me crazy, Bruno. I can't even think straight. Effective fat loss techniques, women's health and fitness, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy, much more. Subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page, where each day I I, I, I post new information on medicine, nutrition, exercise, science. Uh, also, I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics uh, website where current subscribers only can send me questions, which I'll be happy to answer. Only for current subscribers. I don't answer unsolicited questions. If you want to uh, have any uh, ideas for future videos, feel free to uh, leave them in the comments section of this video. 
was based on uh, somebody wanted some information on Nasetol. That's why I did this video. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. I'm cutting this video short because Bruno, I, 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 I got to pick him up. I got to calm him down. But anyway, he, he's a little bit of a brat sometimes, but he's a great buddy, and uh, I've had him for years. If you want to have a best friend, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog.